The sound you hear is what some experts claim to be a Bigfoot scream. Recorded in the state of Washington by a group of campers in 1971, it is regarded as the highest quality audio of the creature ever captured. Hello, welcome to Bigfoot Real Encounters. We're glad to have you stop by. We'd also like to take this time to invite you to share your encounter. You can send your stories to the email bfrealencounters at mail.com where we will feature your story with all of the respect that it deserves. So send your stories in bfrealencounters at mail.com. We look forward to hearing from you and your great stories soon. Hello everybody, welcome to Bigfoot Real Encounters. This is your host Chris. Welcome to all of our new listeners, viewers to the channel, as well as all returning viewers. I noticed looking at uh, some of the information about my channel that 61% of my viewers are not subscribed hey subscribe <laughs> help uh, put this uh, channel on the map and uh, that's fine you don't have to but it sure would be nice wouldn't it and uh, also share the videos uh, with other folks uh, it would be a nice thing for you to do also I would greatly appreciate that but anyways we're in store for some additional eyewitness accounts I have found these on the BFRO website it's public domain uh, there's no copyright on the stories and these people have publicly posted them knowing that they're going to be seen by other people and if you have posted a story an encounter on the BFRO website and I'm reading it narrating it Please let me know. I want to hear from you. There may be, have been some editing done when it went up. Uh, maybe there's some things that you would like to add to it. Man, you'll get the chance. I'll re-narrate. We'll put in uh, whatever things you'd like to add. Maybe you've had additional encounters or other things that you remembered. But certainly get a hold of me at bfrealencountersonmail.com. I've been going state by state and Today we're going to take a look at the state of Louisiana, down in the Cajun area, I suppose. And this says in the late 1970s in Rapides Parish. And I'll just keep the introduction short and just get right into this. This one reads, We just had a house built, Esler Field, by a set of woods. At the time, it wasn't too populated. Well, one night, my father and mother had friends come over on a Friday night and play cards. Their daughter was my sister's friend, so we were all outside at night playing around on our father's car hood, which was parked on the side of the driveway next to the woods. I got down from the car hood and went off to the side of the woods and was walking towards a street light that we had put up near the end of the driveway and off on the side of the woods when I felt something standing up in front of me. It was very hairy or furry so I lifted my head all the way up to look into the eyes of Bigfoot. Its eyes were very dark and the pupils were very big. Its face had a grayish color to it. It was almost like a gorilla face, but wasn't dark, but grayish. It had a more upright forehead. That face itself wasn't all covered with hair. All it did was look down at me, no expression on its face at all, like it was just curious. Well, of course, I ran off the side of the woods and toward and into my house leaving my sister and her friend behind. I told my parents what I had seen when I could finally calm down, but they thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. 
but after a few minutes my sister and her friend ran in and slammed the door and said they heard someone walking in the woods. Nothing else was said and I think everyone else has forgotten, but I never did or could. It didn't seem to be a monster, but it did seem to be a creature with a soul and feelings and wasn't out to harm. If it wanted to, it could rip me one end or the other. It was very tall, very wide in the shoulders, long arms and wide. This is my sighting. I never really have told anybody until now. Since then, I always knew and knew if I wanted, I could find such an animal. Thank you. Wow. Imagine being a young person and just running right into something. You feel it before you see it. You felt something in front of you standing up. It was hairy and furry. And so you looked all the way up as far as your neck will let you look. And you're looking into the eyes of the thing. Well, thank goodness it wasn't a mean one. Thank goodness it was expressionless. It didn't have a look of hatred on its face. Thank goodness. And here's that recurring theme. The parents wouldn't listen to the kids. I saw something out there. It's big. It's frightening. And the parents, oh, it's just in your head. Parents, don't do that to your children. Okay? I'm sick of reading that. I guess the main people to blame are those in power, so to speak, quote, the people that we elect, in, uh, put in charge, whatever. We the people have the power, that's what it's supposed to be, but we hire people, bureaucrats, to run daily business of our government. And we set up uh, our own raw laws so that the laws are... Uh, are our rulers instead of people being our rulers which is uh, what it's supposed to be but people always wiggle their way in there to uh, get their own way you know how it is people have always done that but anyways if the people in charge of the information would let the information flow as to what they know the reality of those creatures parents would not turn their children away and say it's just part of your imagination. Other people wouldn't get laughed at by their friends and family members who are supposed to have your back. It would be very different. We would say, oh, it's a Sasquatch or Sabe as we're learning or a wood booger or whatever. Let's take the precautions that we know we need to take because they are real. They are out there. We know their behaviors. But it's not that way, is it? It's getting that way because of the popularity of the subject, just taking North America by storm. Actually, the world, uh, people are seeing the television shows and YouTube channels all across the world. So many are becoming aware and uh, opening up their eyes to the reality of these beings being there. Beings being there, that's for funny. But anyways... Let's start taking each other at each other's word, okay? And listening to our children when, they, when they're frightened about something. Okay, rant number one out of the way. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Okay, let's take a moment for some channel maintenance. Like, share, subscribe. Take a look at those links in the description box below. There's some good stuff down there. Got Jeffrey Lilly's book, Stellar J.M. Bigfoot's River Day. Got some Bigfoot cups and t-shirts and other books by David Politis and just some links to those on Amazon. Being an Amazon affiliate, if you click one of those links and purchase something, I will get a small commission off of that. Nothing to live on, but it is something anyways. I would personally appreciate it if you would do that. Also, check out the Facebook web, the Facebook group page. It's a private group, Bigfoot Anonymous, set up specifically for people who've had encounters. Where you can talk amongst each other about your encounters, share stories, maybe come up with solutions if you're having ongoing encounters. It's just getting started. There's not a lot of uh, activity on there. 
myself and Jeffrey Lilly are uh, basically the only ones being active. Other people are just, uh, I guess they're just looking at it. But it's put there for people to interact with each other. Let's get it going, folks. The rest of you, if you've had encounters, join in. Put your encounter out there. Maybe you can learn something. Maybe you can help somebody. That's one of the questions I ask in order to join. Do you think you can help somebody? And would you be willing to? And that means put your story out there, okay, and interact with folks. So let's use that. It's out there for you to help you. I'm not going to take stories off of there. If you want your story on the YouTube channel, you got to send it in to bfrealencounters at mail.com. And please do. Okay, let's look and see if we have another story here. Okay, we're looking at Claiborne Parish. Uh, back in the years of 1977 to 1981. And uh, this one here reads, there were actually several incidents that took place when my family resided in this particular location. I'll try to hit on a few here. One night, my mother, my grandmother, and I heard a loud bang on the back of the house, which shook the house. Pause. Here we go again, folks. That slap on the side of the house. I heard him when I was young, too. I'm going to continue. When we went to check it out, we saw a large figure pass by the dining room window. This window was rather high off the ground. I was about 10 or 11 at the time, and I could not even reach the bottom of this window. But whatever it was covered the entire window from top to bottom and side to side, as I passed over it. So it had to be tall and rather large. It was dark in color and appeared to be covered with hair. My grandmother got her gun and we spent most of that night without sleep. On another night, in the early fall, I was in bed with the window open above my bed. My mother was in the bathroom right next to my room in the shower with the window beside her also open. At the same time, we heard something walking in the leaves in our yard just outside. She ran from the bathroom to my room. I had heard this thing walking and breaking sticks as it approached. I could also hear a breathing. I had the impression it was quite large from the sound of the breathing, which was heavy. It made a slight, deep moaning sound as I breathed. I was paralyzed with fear and I could not look out my window. I could not even get out of bed when my mother came to the door and, and yelled for me to come to her. She made herself come to my bed and grabbed me out of the bed, but she also couldn't bring herself to look out the window. It made the hairs stand up on our necks and we just weren't able to try and look at it. We didn't smell anything that night, we could not find footprints from either of these uh, two incidents because of the yard being covered with leaves. However, we did find broken sticks where it was apparent something rather heavy had walked in order to break them. We didn't weigh enough to break them. We tried. And we did find footprints on numerous occasions out behind our home down a dirt road uh, that went not even a quarter mile to an oil well. We also discovered hairs on the barbed wire fence. We saved some of these and I believe my parents sent them off to be analyzed but we never heard anything from it. The hair color did not match any animals in the field nearby. The animals in the field were cows and were black and red in color. This hair was a light brown. It was also four or five inches long. This is going to sound a little far-fetched, but during the time we lived here, we witnessed what we believed was a young Sasquatch become mature. It happened over a period of years. We first noticed other large four-toed footprints. I have no idea where the fifth toe was. On the dirt road behind the house. It was larger than any man's could be, it had five foot spaces between prints, and one was so heavy 
that it imprinted in some soft rock in the area. We watched these footprints a lot. No one we showed them to could identify them. However, bear prints were ruled out by the people we showed them to. We saw them all the time there. There was a pond nearby that maybe it was using for water. One day we noticed a smaller set of prints alongside the larger ones. We watched over time as these prints got larger and larger with the other ones. Then one day it was just one set of smaller prints. Those got larger and larger until they reached what appeared to us as grown. Even up to the time we moved from there, we had incidences and saw these prints. We also saw where it looked like something had bedded down under a rotted out tree and had packed the ground with straw. There were tiny piles of bones and feathers there too, not strewn around but arranged neatly in piles. My grandmother heard something in those woods also while hunting that sent her running so fast she lost her footing and tumbled down the hill and skinned herself up. She could not describe the sound to us. She just kept saying it's not like any sound she had ever heard before. We had been tracking a buck and listened to it snort in some dense brush when she heard it from the opposite direction. It only yelled once, but that was enough to scare her so badly to cause her to hurt herself getting away. And she was in shock when she got back to the others she was hunting with, and her face was so white they were afraid she was going to pass out. She won't talk about it now. I will tell one other incident and quit on that. It happened to my sister, who was 14 at the time, a friend of my sister, also 14 at the time, and myself. I was 11. We had walked down the dirt road behind our house and had reached just inside the edge of the woods. We're starting to smell this awful smell we couldn't identify. We were talking about this smell when suddenly we heard a grunting or growling noise from the woods beside us. It was not very loud, but it was a deep sound that terrified us. We ran immediately home and did not venture back there alone again. We were even scared when we would go down there with family. We all often walked that road, but we all always felt like we were being watched the whole time. These woods behind our house were connected with a large swampy wooded area called Middle Fork Bottom. It was connected to the Kisachi National Forest. I must also mention that on the occasions this thing visited close to our home, our two dogs we had would not bark. As a matter of fact, they would leave our house for three days at a time and not return until we went to get them from a neighbor's house down the road. If we brought them back sooner than that, they would duck their tails behind them and run away again. I have never seen brave dogs that pitiful looking. Other people who lived nearby had incidents with footprints, sounds, and smells as well. Wow, that's a lot of happenings going on around the one area. There wasn't any uh, report of the parents not believing in this case. I mean, the, the grandmother heard something. Uh, everybody was on board with what was going on, and uh, they just took precautions, I suppose. And the dogs know. <laughs> they really do know. And, and you know something? Not just with this and the other story that uh, I narrated. In all my videos, I've got something like... Oh, I don't know, 36, 37 videos out there now, and averaging about uh, three eyewitness accounts per video. Not one encounter did anybody bang on a tree and scream into the forest to have that encounter. Just some food for thought. All right, let's see if we have time. We do have time. Let's get another eyewitness account here. All right, our last encounter here, 1987 in Caddo Parish. This one reads, 
I had stopped my boat along Black Bayou to go look at a pond that usually contained ducks on the outer side of the levee. As I was approaching the levee, I caught a glimpse of something to my left. It was about 200 yards away. I stopped behind a tree and peeked out to have a good look. On the edge of the levee was a creature that appeared to be about six feet tall. It had shaggy dark brown hair and was walking upright. The creature was walking directly towards me. I was still watching the creature when it was about a hundred yards away. I wasn't scared at all because my shotgun was fully loaded. The creature stopped about a hundred yards away and looked directly in the direction that I was hiding. From the way it acted, I think he smelled me or something because I didn't make a sound or move. The thing paused for about three to four seconds, then bolted directly over the levee, headed for the big woods. I immediately ran to the top of the levee to get another look at the thing. When I got to the top of the levee, the thing was entering the edge of the woods, which was about 200 yards away. This thing covered 200 yards to my 50 yards, and I was at a dead run. I was trying to sneak up on this pond that was on the other side of the levee and possibly kill some ducks when I saw this thing walking on the edge of the woods all along the bottom of the levee. Wow. Just walk and mind in your own business. And uh, there you happen to see one, given by the description of the size, it was probably a younger one. You know, it doesn't say in here, but I don't think there were any ducks in that pond. <laughs> I think maybe the creature might have had the same idea for a duck snack. You never know. <laughs> so, and another encounter in the daylight. No tree banging, no screaming into the woods. Imagine that. You know, my... Uh, Late, one of my latest videos uh, that came out in the comment section, a truck driver relayed a couple of uh, encounters that he had and had some experiences. And uh, it got me to thinking, you know, if we can get some additional truck drivers to uh, put forth some of their encounters, I know you're out there and I know that truck drivers see a lot of things just like people who work the railroads. Uh, they're back in the middle of uh, nowhere where other people just don't reach because of the, where the train tracks go. But truckers, they're out there all hours of the night and day, constantly, you're bound to have seen them. And this gentleman said he'd seen 11 of them, approximately. And it was a very interesting story. If I can get some truckers to send in their encounters, and uh, you can put them in the comments, I can take it from there, or preferably you can send it to bfrealencounters at mail.com. And uh, I'd like to do a video that's just trucker themed. Okay, how's that sound? Sounds good to me too. So anyway, like, share, subscribe. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. And remember about the Facebook page, private group, Bigfoot Anonymous. You can share your encounters among each other without fear of ridicule, without uh, worrying if I'm going to put it up on a video or not, because I'm not going to. Only if you put it in my comments on a video, or if you send it into bfrealencountersonmail.com. So be aware of your surroundings, hiking, fishing, backpacking, camping, picnicking, having those family reunions in the state and national parks. Just remember, be aware of those branches cracking behind you. We'll see you in the next one. Once again, another great story. Thanks for tuning in. Please share your encounter. Email us, bfrealencounters at mail.com. Your story is very important. We will treat it with the respect that it deserves. Also, be sure to smash the like button, share, and subscribe. Thanks once again. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Watch out for our next video. Maybe we'll feature yours. Have a great day.